Hello, people of the internet. Uh, just getting ready to make some more stuff today, as per usual. That seems to be my default. Uh, making stuff makes me happy, so hopefully you guys get a kick out of watching me make stuff. Let's see here. So we have some cards I adhered to the snowflake paper last week. And I haven't gotten around to cutting them out yet, so we're going to do that real quick. Um, I typically rubber cement these on with the creases facing each other. Just makes it a little bit easier to get a nice clean line along the top. So we'll just cut these out real quick. Um, There we go. And those are almost cut out. Oh, we have kitty help here today. All the cats are in a talkative mood today. They're pretty sweet. I am a little biased. Just a little. I have pictures of the kitties on Instagram. You can see them at uh, Zena, Zena Jade on Instagram. The the growling in the back background is not actually an, an really unhappy cat. LAC just doesn't want to share her box with Meow Wow. So those two are all cut out. We have one large sheet of snowflake paper left. I'm going to put this in the rest of the pile with these. I think I might turn these slips of paper into bookmarks and include them with the cards, but we'll see. I know last week I was talking about uh, getting a laminator and I haven't yet, so that'll have to wait for another time. Nice clean cuts along the edges. These little slips of paper can go in the same pile as the big slips of paper. These are really nice sharp scissors. I labeled them paper. I don't know if you can read that or not, so I'd remember not to use them for anything else. Uh, they're Craft Smart. I think I got them at Michael's. That was quite a while ago. They came in like a set of three or five. So, and these ones are all stamped on the inside, at least partially. So you've got the tree we were working on, so we're going to finish up these four that I just cut out with the tree. And continue working on stamping the rest of these cards. Last week I made 12 cards. I have 13 done total. Um, you can get in on the card making goodness by going to my Patreon and signing up for the $5 tier to get a card. Um, that covers postage anywhere in the world and supplies and time and all that good stuff. So, if you want a card. And my Patreon is also Xena Jade. Patreon.com slash Xena Jade. So, Zena Jade all the time. Let's see here. These are brush pens. They're pretty cool. They have a nice, it's a brush tip. And these are just generic ones. As you can see, they're not really labeled with anything. I did get these at Michael's. They were very affordable. I believe the pack was like five or ten dollars. I've gotten like, oh my goodness, kitties. Um, so let's see here. I'm just going to start brushing. <laughs> yeah, cats. They're very vocal. Allie C doesn't particularly like to share her box. I actually have a picture of her and Miawa in the box together. And they, they snuggle together so much, but LAC resists 
snuggling oh. as much as possible. I'm not sure why, because she likes it when it actually happens. So, But, you know, cats. They're cute and fuzzy and sometimes stubborn. Most of the time stubborn. So, as you can see, I'm using three different colors on these trees. I thought it would look really cool to give the tree different colored accents. So, now when you're doing this, after you get this all colored up, however you wanted it, um, you're going to want to breathe on it. The moisture from your breath re-moisturizes the colors that you put down. So, and that'll make sure that the ink will adhere to the paper. So, here I'm just going to breathe on this. Just a couple times. Put this down here. Get that down. See, now we have another finished tree. Put that over to the side, and we're going to do this again and again and again. So, three more times. I'm going to try to whip through this stuff because I'd like to do some other neat things with you today. There's a... Uh, I like the glitter that I was using on the snowflakes last week, but it's not adhering the greatest. I probably need like a fixative spray to make sure the glitter doesn't like fall completely off. So in these Memento Dewdrop ink pads are not the most uh, sticky, so the glitter won't stick to the ink very well either, so I might just end up stamping the snowflakes, like a really pretty blue or pink. And that's fine too. I just don't want anybody to be disappointed if they get a card that doesn't have a real well-defined snowflake on it, so we're going to fix that before I make all these cards with glitter snowflakes and they don't all stick. See? Very pretty. <sighs> so yeah, you can get brush pens at pretty much any craft store or online. Uh, probably Amazon will carry them too. So. I have a whole bunch of them. I don't even think. Oops. I don't even think this is all of the brush pens I have. So they come in all sorts of different colors. This may actually be two different packs. Could be one. I don't remember. But you have all sorts of pretty colors for brush pens. And the great thing about these brush pens for stamping is that the this color comes right off using the ink remover. So it won't ruin the stamp. I don't know if you can use um, all of those one brush pens. We have some other brush pens. I mean, there are all sorts of different kinds, but... I'll have to see if I can't remember what they're called later. Oh, I was going to tell you guys something. Last week I said that I wasn't sure if there was repositional rubber cement. Well, I looked it up and there is. So, I guess I guess I was remembering right there. I believe it's also made by Elmer's. Probably other companies make it too, but I really like Elmer's rubber cement. They're they're pretty good. Is that all stamped up? It's like a excess glitter or something on there. Almost done with these. Typically, I would do like all these stages, like in order, like I do these trees and then I do all the snowflakes and all the cards and then I would do like the inside stamping parts of all the cards 
and then do the sentiments and then do the fronts like the snowflakes and stick them on the, use these dots to stick these snowflakes up top and then you know just get my own little factory line going because it goes a little bit faster that way getting them done quicker but because I'm showing you guys how to do these I don't want to stay on one task too long I think that would be a little repetitive so and that's not necessarily bad but I want to show you guys how to make cards not continue doing the same thing over and over and over again so there there's these get that it's all done now Let's move these off of here I have a little square of paper towel here it's like it's doubled up and I've just been using that as a uh, to clean my stamps off on and you can usually get your paper towels like really ink filled before you need to get new ones so just use my stays on. You can see I got that at Hobby Lobby. It's stamp cleaner. Clean off the. This is like a felt. So nice and gentle for the stamp. Clean that off. I'm going to leave that there to dry. Grab these. Now these are all finished at the same rate now. And I have tons of them, as you can see. So, let's see. What should we do next? I think we're going to work on the insides of some of these now. So, I have like a huge Christmas card list this year which is super exciting for me I love mailing out holiday cards I think it's like one of the best things ever and it's better than getting a bill so you can get in on that by going to my patreon I may make this whole card thing more of a regular thing to send cards throughout the year so maybe like one a month and I've limited it to 20 people because I'm already making a bunch of cards so push this down make sure the ink goes everywhere where it's supposed to yeah that's not too shabby it says jingle all the way I'm just gonna set that aside and grab another one of these do the same thing. I figure we can make 10 more of these, finish up 10 of these cards today. So, maybe 12. I have some more of those snowflakes that are already stamped and glittered, so we'll use those up and maybe stamp some other ones in this lovely pink color. It's called Angel Pink. Or we have uh this blue so it's very pretty i just breathed on the stamp a little bit because i let it sit while i was talking to you so set that aside open these up sometimes the edges stick together when you use the rubber cement the way i did and they just pull right apart without ripping the paper um, so that's good. And you're just kind of general, gently patting the, the ink pad. See, it's coming off pretty good. You don't have to like really push hard or anything. That'll over ink whatever you're trying to over ink your stamp. So. I thought about doing the jingle all the way with the brush pens too 
and doing like a really cool ombre effect, but but that uh, would also take a really long time. Lots of cards to make. I'm going to make at least a hundred and then if anybody signs up on Patreon, I'll make those in addition. So I've got some new paper too that I want to use to make some more cards too. I have enough for 20 of those with some. I don't know. I didn't buy like enough sheets of the snowflake paper to do 100 cards, I don't think. So do 20 cards in this other paper. I'll show you it to you in a second. It's really cute. It's got snowman on, or not snowman, Santa's on it. There, see, you jingle all the way. Let's see, I'm gonna find that paper. So I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but it's slightly glittery. Like these stars are glittery on everything. All the little stars are glittery. So it's very pretty. It's got candy canes and reindeer and Santas on it and little trees. and Yeah, it's, it's very pretty. So use that to make some more cards too and I got enough enough of that paper to do 20 cards so five sheets and that paper I don't know if if it'll be available where you're at but um, we picked that up at Joann's so they have some really cool stuff there I also picked up a couple paper pads. Um, they were heavily discounted. Um, they had a great sale going and I'm like, well, yes, yes, I will pick up some more paper because I always need more paper. <laughs> always. I probably have enough paper to make like thousands of cards, but new paper is so much fun. It's a problem. Art supplies are a problem. They're just, they're just so much fun. You know, like, I also have the cutest uh, snowflake printer paper and some Christmas tree printer paper and I might include a letter in with these Christmas cards to all my friends and family and stuff and I don't know I think that might be fun I'm not entirely sure what I would say in a letter but maybe just print out Merry Christmas in really big letters <laughs> that might be pretty funny I think I don't have anything else to say but Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year. So that would be okay too. See how many have I done here so far? I don't want to go over my 10 or 12 card limit. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 8, 9, 10, 11. Alright, we'll do one more. Start making tracks to these cards. So, yeah, the reason I started these so early. This is because I have so many to do. Like, 
if I had let this go until like mid-November or late November, there's no way I'd be able to make such cool cards on such short notice. So, I mean, I would have to be working on these like four or five hours a day, probably, instead of, I mean, for like, I don't know how many days in a row, but it'd take a while. Well, the other cool thing about these memento pads, they stack. They stack and they like hook to each other. Isn't that neat? So they won't like collapse or fall over or whatever when. It's neat. It's neat when manufacturers do stuff like that. It's just like, well, it's kind of cool. Well, they won't fall over when I stack them up together. I'm using the stays on again to clean off the stamp. That's... Oh, I'm cleaning off the uh, felt when I stamp when the stays on. Otherwise, this will it'll get just uh, too dirty and it won't clean very effectively. So stamp the stays on on the paper towel and that works pretty good so I got I'm going to use these two smaller stamps and like arrange them like so on there I'm going to get these out of the way still have a huge stack of these to do but I'll probably start working them when I'm not just on Twitch now because I'm sure you guys don't want to well, I don't know maybe you would like to watch me do all these that might be slightly entertaining so ramble on about um, how the cards are going while I make them so this is Angel Pink and Memento Really nice light pink. It matches well with the snowflakes on the on the outside of the card, the paper that I used. There. So see little pink snowflakes. I'm actually gonna do these direct on the table. Oh, the other thing cool about these memento ink pads, I'm sure you noticed, they stand up too. So, beat that other ink pads. Now these are dew drops. And if I were you, I'd buy them on sale. You can use a coupon on them or something. They're really nice. One of my favorite ink pads. Maybe not the most um, expedient with like really large stamps, but still it's... Oh man, I almost bought like this huge snowflake stamp from Joann's yesterday, but... I couldn't really justify getting another stamp when I didn't know what I would use it for right now. I have several really pretty big stamps that I haven't used yet. Figure if we make this a regular thing and I get any Patreon patrons wanting cards, I can start using some of these cool big stamps. And as backgrounds for the front of the cards. I think it would be really cool to layer like um, do that like a large stamp like you put a large stamp here and then put vellum over it with another stamped image like say the background was like trees and you could put vellum over it which is like a translucent paper 
and then stamp like little deer in front. So it would give it like a foreground and a background. That would be super cool. Oh, I knocked them over. They're not impervious to being knocked over, I guess. That's okay, though. Oh, that's two cards, I think. Yep. So since I was working with glitter, there's glitter everywhere. All over my table and all over the cards. And that one a little high up. We'll put this one down here. So yeah, like designing, designing cards is a lot of fun, I think. Just have to kind of, I'd start with like your paper that you want to use for like the front and base your colors around that to be like coordinating. <laughs> so like since like this one has purple and pink. And it, are all these, this, all the snowflake paper had purple, pink, and blue in it. I thought that the pinks, pink snowflakes, would go really well on a little pink heart. And then the tree, we kept like its natural colors, but I really wanted to match the snowflakes together. And since we have green here, we used green here, and it really stands out against the other colors. So it's fun. It's, it's a lot of fun figuring out how you want to design stuff. And I don't think it's overly hard if you keep things that coordinate really well together. You can do like contrasting colors too and complementary colors. and There's all sorts of great ways to do this. You can get yourself a color wheel if you're unsure. But what colors are going to go well with other colors? It's kind of a good way to. That's I I find that a little surprising though. I don't have a color wheel. I don't think. I should probably get one. They're so pretty. I just kind of eyeball everything. For the most part it works out okay. Every once in a while I get a get something that doesn't quite go together, but doesn't happen very often. For that I'm grateful. So in case you were wondering, I got this these cards, like the cardstock came in a card and envelope pack of 50, 50 each. So 50 cards and 50 envelopes. And uh, we purchased those at, well I purchased those at Hobby Lobby. And then the snowflake paper came from Hobby Lobby. These stamps, I don't remember where I got them. The stamp, I don't remember where I got it. But these sentiment stamps, these right here. And the jingle all the way came from Michael's. Last year, I think. I might have bought them on sale. I'm really glad I remembered to use them this year. So. Sometimes I get stamps for seasonal stuff and I'm just like, oh. That's beautiful. I'll use that. And then I totally forget I have it. Oh, that's good. I don't know what got on there. Oh, well. Let's 
see here. Those are, those are there. I'm going to put this lid back on the stamp. I'm going to clean those now. I think it says you're supposed to shake this first. Maybe? Maybe not. Yeah, we shook it, so. Get off that little snowflake. I don't actually think there's a lot of ink on the snowflakes. I kept the kept pressing them pretty light on the ink pad. Most of the ink from the snowflakes went on the cards, but we'll clean them anyway. I mean, you're supposed to clean them, but there. Now we'll get these all folded, back to folded, because we're going to work on the fronts. You know what I, what stamp I forgot to get out? My little made by stamps, because those should go on the back, and then I should put my name right there. Well, like sometimes I make cards and they're so pretty, but nobody knows they're handmade because I forgot to stamp the backs of them. They're like, well, where did this card come from? And it's just blank on the back. Like, oh, you gotta remember to at least sign your name on the back, so maybe put the year. So, so we have plenty of these little dots left. I think these I got at Michael's maybe. They're just little adhesive dots. You can see I've used some for the other cards already. Um, bless my boyfriend's heart. He cut out all these little squares for me. And then using a paper cutter. And then rounded the corners using a corner rounder for me. He got an awful blister on his thumb doing it. Rounding the corners. So. Ouchies in the name of creativity I guess name of art. So we have we already got a bunch of these snowflake stamps so I'm just gonna start by putting you can use larger dots they have like larger squares and those might actually have worked better with these but I don't think I have any of those so I'm using these little round dots and just putting one in each corner. Ta da! It doesn't have to be perfect. Oh. Glitter. And then line that up pretty well. There, see, it's a finished card. Except for the back. So, I did think about putting like a glitter pen over the heart, and I might still do that on these, but we'll see. If I decide to do that, I may or may not do that on camera because it'll be pretty fast, but I'll have to get the brand of those for you because I think that would be pretty cute. I need so many art supplies, they don't always remember what the brand names of stuff are. I know, um, like the sparkly jelly rolls would probably work pretty well on that, but the, you're going to have to make sure you use a coordinating, like, pink color for those, the pink hearts at the top of the tree, or if your tree has a star, pretty yellow or orange, because they don't know how well the jelly roll will cover up that ink color. There, this one's done too. Grab this one. Do some more dots. 
Yeah, and I do think these are just called dots. Uh, adhesive dots. I have two of these here. There we go. So that's good. I, I'm kind of hoping I'll be able to figure out uh, music for my channel here pretty soon and maybe some other neat things. Like, I know there's these little uh, cute little animations you can put on your videos and that might be awfully cute. So I'm still getting the hang of um, my streaming software and everything that it can do and But yeah, I think some music might be nice. I love music. And I got uh, a special piece of music software where I can upload. It uh, won't get in the way of copyright. So. When did that go? Here it is. I'm trying to keep these in a little pile so I don't. That's two of them. Yeah, so they don't go all over the place. There we go. <clears throat> Very zen making stuff. Got some glitter on the card there. There. There's another one. There. Oops. Cut the edge of those. There we go. Anyway, I think music would be nice if I can get it all sorted. I didn't really have time to mess with it too much today. I should take some time before Mondays and Fridays and work on all this stuff. Like I have this awesome new microphone too, so you might even be able to hear me a little bit better. Um, not that it's bad right now, but I was really excited to get this microphone. And I haven't quite been able to get it to work. So I have help though. I do have help. So that's all good. I just need to take the time to hook it up now. So excited about that microphone. As you can see, I've gone through a bunch of these dots now so far. So we may have to actually purchase some more dots to finish up these cards if I want to continue to make these three-dimensional. Because that's what these dots are doing. They're raising the image up so it's not flush against the paper. I don't think it'll get in the way of postage too much because they're not like super tall, but... So to, uh, oh goodness, so to do the snowflakes, we actually did use this perfect medium, Ranger, acid-free, it's a little glue pad, and I think you can actually get, oh man, I got glue all over my fingers, um, I think you can actually get full-size, uh, glue pads, so, that ought to be kind of cool. The problem too is that this glue pad is just, it may be a little old, so 
We also have to use some setting medium on the glitter so it doesn't go everywhere. done getting there all oh, this jingle this jingle you hear are little kid sizers bracelets I keep setting the dots on top of the bracelets I made and I will have to be making more of those soon so I have a couple couple shows coming up and uh need to make a bunch of those bracelets we got I think they came in packages of 300 bells and I made three bracelets so far <laughs> got two packages of 300 bells each so There we go. Got that one all done. We may work on more of these if we have time. It's only, well, goodness. We're doing really good on time today. It's only 5.43, give or take a minute. So yeah, if you want to, you can use uh, double-sided tape. I would not use repositional double-sided tape. Because um, that means the paper could come off. But you can use double-sided tape to like hold these background pieces of paper in place. So... Instead of instead of rubber cement, just depends what you're comfortable with and how well your ventilation is. Like if you are doing this in like a closed spot, enclosed spot, I would definitely use double-sided tape. If you're not in a well-ventilated area, I can get out my double-sided tape and show you guys what I use sometimes when I actually don't use rubber cement. They're sticking to me. The dots are adhesive. Sticking to everything. There. There's that. That one's all done. I think we only have two more to go. These dots do go a long way though. I think I've made like, this will be 25 cards with all these dots that you see here. So it's not bad. I think they come in packs of two sheets. So I should be able to do, if I have all my dots, I should be able to do about a, I don't know, 75 cards, all those dots. I'd say 60, maybe. 65 cards with two sheets of dots. I don't know if I'm mathing that right or not, but I'm guesstimating.
If anybody wants to do more precise math with that, that's fine by me. So, I do apologize if the stream's going in and out. We have been having intermittent internet issues where I'm streaming, so... And I don't really know how to fix it, so if you get tired of the stream going in and out, you can also watch me on YouTube. This whole video will be uploaded there. Um, of course, I'd like you to stay here too, but... I completely understand if the internet issues get to you, so... And you can view me on YouTube as Zenith Jade, of course. So, get some of this glitter off my table. Get these little dots. So that many dots did 25 cards. And these are 12. And oh, let's see here. Here's the other ones. So 25 cards total. Oh, I was going to show you. See? I don't know how well you can see this, but it's raised up slightly. So it's got slightly three-dimensional look to it. I just think that's the coolest. Set that over there. Oh, let's see. How many of these do we have left? We have four. Oh, these were done with like a pearlescent powders, mica powders. And they turned out really well. So, they probably also need a setting spray so they don't just wipe right off, but very pretty. Very, and they're, they got the really beautiful pearlescent look to them, so. Oh, well, I think I'm going to give myself a brief intermission to figure out what I'm going to do next. Uh, you guys just hang tight, and I'll be back in just a couple minutes.
Hello, people of the internet. Uh, thanks for bearing with me while I took a small break to get stuff reorganized here. So, I think instead of working on more cards, I'm going to make a couple of these Jingle Bell bracelets because I need to make a ton of them. Um, so I'm just going to pour Jingle Bells all over the mat. can see they make a nice jingle noise, so they'll be quite appealing, I think, for younger kids. And we have some beautiful uh, plastic acrylic uh, Aurora Borealis beads, uh, AB for short. And I think I'm going to put some of these in between the jingle bells. I think that will look awfully nice. As you can see, I did some black ones on these, and that also looks pretty nice. So these are five inch diameter. I'll make some adult size too. I put some big bells along the top of the bracelet, and then smaller ones along the bottom. And I tried to do like a nice coordination of colors too. But you can't just go willy nilly with these and just put them in any assortment you choose, like there's one, did red, see, looks kind of nice, and one's in mostly green, so they're all going to be different. They're an awful lot of fun to make, so, so we'll just start by stringing some beads on here. This is power cord. I believe I got this from Fire Mountain Gems. So, start by stringing on some tiny bells. Oh, you don't need that much room on the end. Let's see. Oh, goodness. Here we go. No! Got all hooked together. These are hemostats. You can use them to secure the ends of stuff. I don't want this to just keep spooling out, so I'm going to put a little hemostat there. And then if I have to add beads to this end, or I mean this end, I can just cut it and put more beads down here and put a hemostat on this side. So, I'm going to do, that is piglet talking. Oh, got distracted by my kitty. He's like everybody's favorite. Everybody's favorite kitty. He's very hard to get a picture of because he doesn't like to stand still. Which is pretty incredible for like an 18 year old cat. So. He's pretty active yet. It's, it's good for him though. Like. He's not underweight or anything, so I'm fairly certain he's not hyperthyroid. He's just, he's just happy. That can happen to older cats. So. See, I think we did two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think. Yeah, seven small bells. Just wanted to make sure I counted that right. Can't find a small red bell. I 
How many different ways can you make Jingle Bell bracelets? <laughs> He's so happy. Let's see here. I think I'm going to go with a medium sized green bell. No, we'll just go with a large green bell. Let's see here. I did put all these on one side, didn't I? Let's see here. So I'm going to grab my handy dandy uh, easy bracelet. It's an easy bracelet mini. That's a sizer for bracelets. So. This. Oh, fortunately it's not very heavy, but that's okay. Let's see what size this bracelet is real quick. It's about five inches. That's probably good for a child. Another reason to use hemostats. Take this off. Grab my pair of purple scissors. Cut this off. Now after after I get done making a bunch of bracelets, I will glue the knots using GS Hypo Cement. And that you can get pretty much at any craft store. So um, I know for sure you can get it at Michael's and you can get it at Fire Mountain Gems. Um, they both carry it. Make sure that's good and tight. Yep, that's good. That is good. There's one bracelet made. Let's make another one, shall we? Got all these bells, we might as well make lots of bracelets. I'll do one with green bells on the bottom. That ought to be fun. Oh, that's the name of the markers I was thinking of. They're Tombows. I'm not sure if they're going to be good for stamping or not. I need to look into it. Um, like if you can use them on stamps. You can, yeah, I'm going to have to look into it, but they have a uh, brush, brush tips that I think would go particularly well on stamps, and they have uh, a lot of different colors, so one, two, one, two, three, and we'll do a medium-sized gold one. Oops. Go ahead and just keep stringing these on. We're going to do some large ones. I think we're going to do I 
we have three large little red bells. Oops. No, so that's Piggy talking in the background. He's so good natured. Good natured kitty. Just stringing these on. Let's see, one more green bell, and then another clear AB bead. And this bracelet should be finished. So you must that. Now we're gonna tie a knot. Tying knots using this cord can be kind of tricky. The uh, surgeon's knot doesn't always like to orient itself well using the power cord. I just think that's a practice thing. Gotta get, let's see, that's a pretty good knot. There's the bracelet. That one turned out especially well, I think. I really like how the colors coordinate on it. So, I'll make some more Jingle Bell bracelets. There's that. Just stringing them along. Let's see. What have we not done? Well, we have kind of covered all the colors so far. We'll do a red one. Should we do an all red one, do you think? I think that might look kind of pretty. I legitimately do not know if these are going to fit on my bracelet stand. The bars are a certain diameter. I think it's like six inches or so. So these may be too small to fit on my bracelet stand. Not entirely sure how I'm going to display them then, but I'm sure I'll figure something out. So do we have any medium sized jingle bells going red? Here's one. It's just... Yeah, they're a little bit bigger than those. By a hair. Do some big red jingle bells. Oops, slipped right out of my fingers. They're a little slippery, they are metal, so.
There we go. Slide this medium sized ball in there. Medium small. <laughs> it's not a very big jingle ball, but bigger than the tiny ones. There we go. Get this going. It's another bracelet almost finished. See how we are. Yeah, that one's awfully pretty. I'm going to make some of these to fit adults too, but we're mostly focused on kids this time around with these jingle bells, I think. Jingle bell bracelets. There we go. Here's that. Red and, red and clear. That looks pretty cool. That's three bracelets we've made so far. These work out fairly fast. Nice working on a project that doesn't take too much brain power, I guess. Just kind of meditative, stringing a bead on after the other, or bead, jingle bell bead, whatever. Actually, need a medium sized jingle bell. These two are medium. Here's a tiny one. I'll do an all green one now. on that medium sized green jingle bell. Do some large green jingle bells. There we are. There we are. I think that's the last large green jingle bell on my mat. I'll have to get some more jingle bells out. Might have a medium sized jingle bell. Medium sized jingle bell. Keep stringing these along. I'll have to show you how I do the knot in just a second. And two more of these. There's a tiny one and there's a tiny one. There we go.
Yeah, I think having some music would be a nice way to fill in these silences when I'm beating. Um, it can be kind of hard to find the end on this if I don't clip it far enough off. Like, if I clip it too close to the inside here, it just kind of blends in with all the rest of the cord. It's hard to find the end. So you're going to take it and you're going to do it like you do a regular knot, except you take it in and you do it one more time. And then you pull it tight. And I kind of hold that in place. And then you do the same thing on the other side here. You do it once like it would be a knot. Then you do it one more time. Oop. Mine slipped. So do it one more time. And then you pull it tight. Every once in a while these knots don't want to go right, so I'll have to undo it and start over, but there's a green and clear jingle bell bracelet. That's awfully pretty. I'm going to have to do a gold one next. More of these little... Don't want to completely fill up the bead mat with all of these beads. You make an awfully big mess. So I think this came in net length 25 meters and it's clear. As you can see, it doesn't have any color to it. And it's 0.8 millimeters in diameter. So, this is stronger than my other beading cord. Well, I don't know if it's stronger, but it is thicker than my other beading cord. I guess theoretically that could make it stronger. But, so, the only back, drawback to the thicker beading wire is that not all beads are going to go on it. Like, freshwater pearls don't fit on this one. I need the 0 .5, 0 0.5 millimeter cord to do that. So well, look at this. We have a visitor bead. We got just an itty bitty flower. Oops. There it is. Itty bitty flower. Came with the uh, clear beads I guess. See, do we have any medium gold bells right here? Get these all strung up. We've been uh, watching Old Sailor Moon on, I think it's what channel is that, moderator? Anyway, we've been watching Old Sailor Moon. And Hulu? Hulu? Yeah. Yeah, we've been watching that on Hulu. So, oops, did that. So, that's been a lot of fun. You know, I think it's aged fairly well. I uh, watched the, like watched it back I think in 1999 too and really enjoyed it. So that dates me a little, but that's okay. There we go. We need one more big bell. So, there we go. Medium sized bell. As you can see, I develop patterns as I go along. So, I'm not 
I don't make any symmetrical jewelry very often. Um, when I make jewelry, it usually has a definitive pattern, even though it may be a complicated one. So, and both sides usually match each other. Every once in a while I'll make asymmetrical jewelry. I have this really pretty necklace I made um, that's asymmetrical and it's one of my favorites. And it seems to be a lot of other people's favorites too. I get a lot of comments on it. So I'll have to take a picture of it or show an old picture, see if I can't find one and share it with everybody. So, well that's Piglet. He's happy. Isn't that two twisties? Hold this in place. Ooh. Pull that tight. Pull that tight. I'm trying not to keep making the knots off of off of camera, but the knots are tiny and hard to see sometimes if I do this over here. So I think that's five bracelets. Three, four, five. Yep, that's five bracelets. All right. Let's see. Well, we might as well make another one. I'll, I'll let you go at about 6.30, I think. I still need to make dinner tonight. should be delicious. It's uh, my boyfriend's brother recipe. It's called Breakfast Stuff. It's got hash browns in it and two different kinds of cheeses. And, oh, let's see hollandaise sauce and eggs and it's just amazing and delicious so should be pretty a pretty yum dinner that's what I'm going to be making for dinner tonight surprisingly it doesn't have any bacon so I think I'll make BLTs tomorrow though. Oh goodness. Piglet is talking. He's being very vocal. Let's see if we can't find some medium sized bells. We get two medium sized gold ones. Do this. Oh, I got the clear bead. Can't forget the clear bead. Wouldn't quite look right without the clear bead. Yeah, so theoretically I could string just jingle bells all the way around, but they would lay funny. So. They wouldn't, they wouldn't quite lay right, I don't think. But the way I'm doing it, the jingle bells are probably all going to be facing outward when you're, when it's actually being worn. That's theoretically because I haven't tried wearing one yet, but that's what I'm hoping will happen. So. Medium sized gold bell. And some tiny bells. Go back down the line to green, gold, and red. Green. Clear bead. Gold. 
therapy. And then red. With a clear bead. Did I string that in the wrong order? I did! We're gonna redo this. These last three beads we're gonna redo. Do red. Clear bead. Sold. Clear bead. There. See, now it matches. Cut this off. Pull that out. Do the knot on this again. See, these are working out fairly fast. See? So six bracelets all finished. I'll break out the glue and there we go. So this is GS Hypo Cement. GS Hypo Cement and I'll do the glue these real quick. Grab a paper towel. This glue likes to go everywhere. Well, this isn't too bad. Sometimes I'll take this off and this entire thing will just be caked with glue. So, there we go. Just working on getting some of this little bits of glue off. There. So as you can see, it has a very fine needle point, and you want to keep this stuff off your skin, and you want to use it in a well-ventilated area. So we have the ceiling fan going, so I don't have to worry too much about it not being a well-ventilated area. Just lightly squeeze, and it's going to start falling out, falling out of the end. I don't know how well you can, guys can see that, but just and then you can just let it squish together. This one is going to be a little tricky, I think. Dab excess glue on the. Get that all sorted. Extra glue on the paper towel. Now because these are going to be kids bracelets, I want to make sure this, these are well glued. Because the last thing I want to happen to these kids is for their brand new bracelets to break on them come unknotted or anything like that. You know, it would be different if it was like regular wear and tear or they stretched it too far. Or, but the last thing I want it to be is my error that caused these bracelets to break on a kid near Christmas. So... Make sure those are glued fairly well. I may go back and glue these again. I'm not sure yet. It will depend how well I think the glue took the first time. There's that. Last one to glue. Let's 
think I got a little on my fingers. Let's see. Go on the paper towel. So please keep rubber cement and this glue away from open flames. That's just a bad idea. So it'd be a big mess. So now the bracelets are all glued. Getting this pin back in here can be kind of tricky sometimes. I'm actually going to bring this kind of close to my face. I can see where it's going, but see, that pin just slides back into the hole. If you need to use like a magnifying glass or a third, third arm or something with a magnifying glass on it, I have one right here. See? Makes things larger. It's kind of cool. Yeah, it's neat. I've had this one forever. Yeah. So, yep, so those are all glued now. Um, we have some extra bells, which we'll use to make more jingle bell bracelets, I'm sure. Maybe some earrings. Um, so maybe we can work on some earrings next time. Uh, thanks for joining me tonight, and I hope you have a great evening and a great week until Friday. I'll be back Friday from 6 to 8, so I will see you then. All right, bye.